Hey guys, welcome to SketchUp Live. Uh, I am a voice and only a voice this week. This is Aaron saying welcome. Our host this week, the marvelous Tyson, who you get to see and hear, is going to be modeling some stuff. So uh, let's uh, everybody say hi, Tyson, and if possible, happy birthday, Tyson. Happy birthday, hi, Tyson. You're, he's not high though, right? All right, let's let's just keep this let's keep this family friendly here, shall we? Okay, my bad. I just this made you know, you get if it's your birthday at SketchUp. You have to live stream. That's that's the new thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was here on my birthday. That's true. That's true. So, what That's... day of the week is your birthday this year, Aaron? Um, I'll tell you right after it's passed. Okay. Jody was in February, so he's safe for a little while. He was. He was on the stream at the time, though. He 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 was mature about it. Uh, my birthday falls on a Sunday this year, so. Ooh, a Sunday live stream. That'll be different. Yeah, it's uh. It will be happening to a very select audience of no one. <laughs> the people in your house. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mill on, on on Twitch wants to know how old you are, Tyson. I oh, know I just know. turned 20. <laughs> Can't you tell? The 20, 25th anniversary of your 20th birthday. <laughs> 20 again? <laughs> All right, so so Tyson's gonna try something that's never, I've never been brave enough to actually do. He's gonna try modeling something uh, that actually exists in real life in front of him. He's gonna take live measurements off of a piece of hardware and model it right here in front of you. So that's how brave he is. That's uh, this is what all the 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 years of sketchuping has brought him to. This a really, awkward, yeah. really awkward looking telescope or or a land based sextant or something. Well and watch, watch it with the, watch it with that S word. You will get us uh, put into a special category on YouTube and say it's not. <laughs> There's gotta be a quote somewhere that says, you know, bravery or stupidity is is kind of the same thing. <laughs> um <laughs> and uh, so we'll we, see. We a, oh, Go ahead. We do have a request to uh, turn our audio up just a bit, Tyson. Most, most specifically, Aaron seems to be the quieter, or he's being called out for being quiet. All right, try that. <laughs> All right, see how that is. Um, of course, I didn't say anything after that, so. It's not often that people ask me to talk louder or more, so that's that's unusual. Rare, rare thing. Um, okay. All right, I guess. Well, at, at this point, we'll just turn it over and just just uh, get into it. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. Everybody, pay attention. <laughs> We probably should start sooner than later because he's got a lot of work ahead of him. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gates. So um, this is going to be, we'll see. Uh, I can only guess Aaron forewarned me, which is something we both anticipated that like, um, you'll model this for two hours, you'll get some amount and then all of a sudden you're left with a whole lot of details and, and 20 minutes to go. So we'll see how we do on timing. Um, but because this is real, I'm just going to start at the base and start creating some of this and work up um, some of this stuff on top. Some of the detail, we'll, we will leave that to a little bit later. But if you look, just to speed things along, I've got a few measurements already. So this, this uh, the foot base, I've got the measurement of the outside and the measurement of the inside. And that's this double circle. And then the measurement of one of these arms. So that should be enough, I think, to get us into trouble. We'll see. That sounds like a great start. I mean, that's... 
measurements are new for most of our viewers because you know some <laughs> of us don't do those. Aaron, Aaron doesn't know how to use measurements. There's, often there's math connected to it. Oh, none of us, none of us on this side are, are friendly to math. The other thing I think, um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to do this one in millimeters, in metric. Let me uh, switch over to. Since I've got a caliper and that'll give me rounding and other things a lot easier in millimeters. So we're just going to switch to that, make sure snapping's off. All right, let's try this. I'm you're going to you're gonna confuse all the Americans in the audience. So. Oh. We're all confused anyway. What's what's the difference? I'm pretty confused. <laughs> um, and to start off, um, I am going to draw this circle. I've already changed my sides to 48 because I want this to just have a little more detail than the standard one. So um, let's see. I'm going to start, take this arm, group it, and move it over here to the center. So as Tyson starts this, just so you all know, this thing, this thing called a transit, is an old piece of surveying equipment. I know that because Tyson told me that's what it was. Um, I'm too young to actually know what it really is. So, yeah, my dad used these whenever he, because he did concrete work, he would use it for setting up sites for his like driveways when he's doing driveways and sidewalks and what have you. It's really fun and fancy, and you get in trouble if you play with it care carelessly. I don't know that from experience. I'm just presuming. <clears throat> um story there jody did uh did you break your dad's transit i, I... knew 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 but i didn't get to play with it very long i would play with it for a minute <laughs> and he'd say put that back in the box and then i would put it back in the box nice um this is obviously not going to be super super exact but we're going to be pretty close so i'm just getting kind of the under you know the way that this curves in let's uh I'm just gonna guess at sort of a curve here. Something that tells me I should start a little, because I know that inside measurement is here. So I'm just gonna get close, that's fine. Something like that. All right, so that's all we need. Having, having, just, having just used the Trimble Fancy Scanner, I forget what that thing is called, Total Scan, what is it called? Anyway, you just use oh, that for working on, like, scanning some buildings, right? Um, Would so, you say like that? Jody's referring, Trimble has a laser scanner that they released, I think, within the past year or two. It's fairly new, and it's called an X7 laser scanner. It's a very high-end. And that thing was amazing. I had never tried one before, and it really was um, cool. Uh, you just set it up, you tell it how detailed to, to scan. It takes like a full 360 sweep and does this whole laser scan and then does a photo, a series of photos and matches them. And then you'll move it 10 meters over and it auto registers to where it was before. And you just start moving it inside or outside of a building. And it creates this millions and millions of data points of information that's accurate to within some you know some notion of a millimeter insanely cool uh that was fun to play with i didn't i didn't get to have it for very long i guess it's not the same thing though although so this has got lenses on each end if you just shine a flashlight doesn't that make this into a laser and that's how we learned about lasers in the american education <laughs> <laughs> that's right Pew, pew. <laughs> Basically, just a telescope with a flashlight on the by, on the other end. 
Yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to make it clear for all those following along at home that assume that lasers are shot out of pistols from Star Wars. Those are blasters. Those aren't lasers. Ah. Okay, just so we're clear. Mm-hmm. I never understood why they're called blasters. By the by, well, apparently blasters. They, really blast they shoot out glowing stuff that moves really slow because they're they're on the screen for multiple frames every time you shoot. Like you can see a blast from a blaster where a bullet you can't even see. You know that's that's that sticks around for a while. It's, yeah, it's it's kind of like it's shooting little lightsabers each time it shoots, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, that seems not prohibitive. What do we got here? I am going to add a little more detail underneath here, just because we can at this point. But then we'll we'll jump past this. If you see that sort of it's carved out, and there's uh, it's probably hard to see in here. So we'll add just a little bit more, but then move on. It's just kind of fun at that point. It's this is the detail that's easy to add. There's some detail coming up that'll be a little more of a challenge so i'll be curious how much time did you spend looking at that thing figuring if this was a good idea or a bad idea before deciding that it was a good idea um we might still find out it was a bad idea <laughs> don't speak so soon Here he's out. <laughs> yeah that that's still to be determined uh real quick uh kakha Ka over on Facebook is asking uh, the process to model um, a flat in SketchUp and do all documentation. That is an excellent question, but probably not something we'll be covering on this live model because that's not what we're modeling. Um, I would recommend taking a look at both uh, SketchUp Campus through our website, SketchUp.com, and our YouTube channel. You may have to piece together some content to get exactly what you want. But uh, there's a lot of good uh, information out there about modeling everything you're asking about. I'm going to put a link in there rather than just offer up that vague and cryptic, go look on our website from Aaron. That's, that's why you're a professional co-host, and I'm just here because this is already on my calendar on Wednesdays. <laughs> it just sounds like, join. Wait, what's this? What's that guy I, doing here? Oh man, I am such a slave to my calendar. It doesn't, I mean, somebody invites me on my work calendar and it pops up and says, you have a thing. I just go, I don't, I'm just, I don't even, I don't even question it. (laughs) I'm just being honest. I appreciate your honesty. All right, that's, Uh, that's a good starting point. Another question about what's being modeled. This is an old transit which is a piece of surveying equipment so so is it is it accurate to call it a transit level because that's what i always called it it Uh, could be i mean it's got you know level on here for doing that i i don't know if anybody out there knows sort of has used these and actually um it's got well just a bunch of cool micro adjustments for for setting it up really accurately but I certainly never used it. I just. So Mario over on Facebook said that he learned how to use this in his uh, topography, topology. I don't know. He learned it and used used this in school 20 years ago. So maybe he'll chime in and and correct us. Nice. Titus is. Oh, no. Christopher said it's just a transit. Clyde's used it. See, that's why I like working with this group, because there's such a wealth of knowledge about things that I have no idea about. Well, and since they're, since it's the internet, then they're probably right. So. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm a sucker and I just assume people know these things when they pipe up, but they could just be Googling. That's true. There's a little segment that's 40 millimeters, and then we'll get to this bigger one. You know what they need to make is a Bluetooth uh, caliper so that whenever you do a measurement, it just blasts the, the value over to your device. I would not be surprised if that exists somewhere. Probably does. I know. If you go over to uh, Matter Hackers or something, go find it. 
Yeah, Titus said exactly what I was thinking, which when, when Tyson showed me the picture, I went, is that a sextant? But yeah. uh, a sextant is on a boat. So if we were still doing the orca from Jaws, then it would be appropriate. So I, got, I have a question for you, Tyson, with, with your workflow here. Are you planning on uh, parting this out? Are you going to have a series of components, or is this going to be a monolithic solid, or what's, what's the thought? So when I build this, that's a good question. Um, if you, it's always a good idea. I'm sure Aaron's talked about this. It's always a good idea to know what you're modeling towards. If I was modeling this towards the idea that I was going to say, try to rec recreate it in a 3D print, then I might take into account and say, I can create this much as a solid and print it this much. And, and, I, and I'd want to do that. In this case, that's not the consideration. I'm thinking that the kind of eventual um, use case for this might just be as a cool desktop item in a rendering. So with that in mind, I am just breaking it up in ways that's easy to model um, in kind of each of these segments. And because it might be a rendering, I would eventually try to come back and champ for some of the edges. And I, I, I'll, I'll actually do that as we go along a little bit. Um, whereas if this was a uh, low poly, then I should turn my circle count down, my segment count. But that's a good question. That's that's what I'm thinking is kind of like a a, a, a medium high um, poly count for a kind of a cool rendering is the the level that I'm kind of going towards. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It's also partially as I look at this and, and sort of work my way up, I'm like, well, this piece is connected here, so I'm going to separate that from here because it might help later to come back and work on it as a different group. Um, so that's part of the thought process too. So that's 12 millimeters. Uh, so JDC did point out that you've yet to hit uh, command S, control S for the Windows users at home. <laughs> Thank you. I'll send you a t-shirt to help you remember. Oh. <laughs> Everything. The problem with the problem with these t-shirts, Aaron, is that you have to look down and read them. And every time I look down to read my shirt, the lettering is all upside down and backwards. So that's because you're not on camera, Jody. Oh, I feel like that wouldn't fix it. It would just make it backwards, but right side up. Um, I do have uh, one uh, one of the plugins over here for chamfering edges for one of Fredo's. A lot of this, though, again, if I were to chamfer these edges, I'll be doing some of that just manually. So offset this in just a tiny amount and then grab this and move it, lock the blue axis and move it up just slightly, right? Create a little bit of a chamfer. Might do the same under here. But this time I'll move this one up since I've already level with that edge. tiny little bit and then the next one up is the same circumference as this circle so I'm just going to copy this oops paste it in place which I should keyboard shortcut for and then start again or just draw the circle since I whatever works Mark or Jody, there's interest in the uh, comments. People want to know more about you and your facial hair. I got it. I got facial hair. I've been on camera a couple of times. I think sort of accidentally. You uh, were you were on the waiting screen for while my uh, office was set up a certain way. Yeah. yeah. The intro screen so showed you in Hangouts. But it's infrequent enough that then people who aren't here regularly will be like, "That is not what I thought that guy was going to look like." <laughs> Whatever that means. I, I try and think in a positive light. <laughs> I, I I try and 
assume that's a good thing, but I, I, I'm never quite sure. Let's find out how wide this place circle is. Roughly. Because I'm so young, I have to hold it back here. <laughs> I've heard Don't that. Don't you love when, you're, when your kids come up to show you something and they put it three inches in front of your face and you got to do, totally do the old guy lean backwards? What are we looking at here? I'm fairly certain <laughs> that kids shoving things in your face is what ruins your near sight perception and requires you to have things like reading glasses. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm hitting keys all over the place here. And, and you don't have the key blaster or whatever that thing is called. No. Let it... And um... <laughs> with reason. With, with a good reason, I have such a convoluted set of keyboard shortcuts. None, of, Very few of them are the original ones. It would just be so confusing. That, I mean, that's, it's, it's something to comment on is that uh, I do tend to leave almost all of my shortcuts as the default. The only real custom shortcuts I have are ones that they, they don't have shortcuts. So like uh, paste in place doesn't have one by default. So I have that. And then uh, things like uh, solid inspector, I've created a shortcut for because it doesn't have one, but uh, Generally, I try to stick with that, so uh, so I can show that. Tyson's too far past that. He's too far gone. He can't. He can't back up. It would. It would. It would be painful to watch for sure. <laughs> the other the other thing that happens right away. I don't know if anybody out there uses a uh, tablet like this, but if you do, then you lose all your navigation that's built into the mouse or like Aaron, you know, he uses a, uh, uh, 3d navigator. But if you use a tablet, you have to map zoom orbit and pan and right. And by default, they're all the way across the keyboard, a Z, what is it? Z H and is as O orbit. I believe so. Yeah. How are you supposed to do that? So off the bat, I, I map them right here, and that means uh, all these have to be remapped to something else because they're useful. So. so, so just not to derail. Hopefully, you can keep modeling while I pepper you with more questions. Um, do you? So there are a certain number of buttons on your pen, right? So are those just assigned to left click, right click? Uh, on here. Um, that's just left click, right click. Yeah. Okay. And these I, I ignore. Oh, because you have your hand, the other hand on the keyboard. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting to watch watch anybody using that, that dang old tablet. I think, I don't remember who it was, but there was, I think, at least one person that said they do use it. Yeah, we've um, had a couple. Nick Sonder does. Does he really? Um, yeah. Huh. He's one of one of one of those tablet guys too. You may want to check out Tyson the 3D pen from Wacom because it actually has three buttons. <laughs> that should be called a 3B for button <laughs> pen, huh? I'm not sure where they why they call it the 3D button or, or 3D pen, but uh, I I I've been using one in my efforts to get better at tableting. Yes, it is a verb. Look it up. Um, <laughs> And having that extra button really did help because that's one of the things that I'm most useful or used to in SketchUp is being able to spin in 3D space at all times. So uh, if I was to use the tablet without the 3D mouse, it would, it's kind of nice to have that third button there because you can actually assign that to orbit and click and move without having the keyboard. Just a thought, some, something worth checking out. That sounds interesting. Um. So I'm waiting to see somebody that uses foot pedals to sort of expand, expand usage even further. Foot pedals, like flying a helicopter yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. 
Like I can't, I can't use a 3D mouse because <laughs> I'm using a tablet and a keyboard. But maybe if I get like a, maybe I've got like a little roller, roller thing on the ground. I can do my, I can do my scrolling with a little scroll wheel on the floor. Man, I've got so many good ideas today. I should. <laughs> you, I'm so yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, Mads Design did mention the X keys keyboard, like a a programmable keyboard, which I think is basically what Tyson's saying is he sets his shortcut keys not based on any logic because of the title of the key. He does it based on the geography on the keyboard itself. And uh, deal with his tiny hands. Guilty. I don't want to get political, but just kidding. Oh, don't you? I don't. I really don't want to get political. No, we don't um, want to do that. <laughs> okay, it, it's there's a certain amount of, um, I think, uh, criticism that could be leveled at spending, um, you know, the first twenty minutes or so putting details that may never ever be seen. But I, I think they're cool, so. I put them in there, but going back to what I was saying about being, uh, you know, this being rendered. Um, yeah, I, that may never, ever be seen. Oh, well, it is if you turn on x-ray and, you know, who doesn't turn on x-ray? Only suckers. Oh, dang. Chumps. Mm -hmm. Oh, dang it again. <laughs> yep. You're a chump sucker. Wait, that's <laughs> weird. That's awesome, though. I mean, I. So one of my favorite things that we worked on was when we were doing uh, machine parts, and what we did in those models. Those of you who did not see it, we started doing this during the early in the pandemic. So about a year ago, once a week we would do a machine parts model, where we would get uh, machine drawings of metal parts, which were you know small, very accurate to like millimeter accuracy on these drawings and we would go in and we would just model them um it was a lot of fun because in the end you end up with this thing this solid that was uh you know looked like it could could be real it could actually be made to exist and there's something very satisfying about creating those models in those small pieces uh plus it's an amazing way to get better at sketchup so something to throw out there for any of you who who have are watching this and thinking it would be a good idea to try sometime i highly recommend it because one of the one of the biggest problems that not just sketchup users but any users of a software like this have is they get stale in their usage so they go in and they do you know you just do the same thing over and over again uh because that's how you use it at work or whatever and uh doing something outside the box like this really helps you learn the tools that you don't use in your normal workflow you sound so much more philosophical when you're not modeling, Aaron. Yeah, I don't have not my tongue's not hanging out either as I <laughs> turn my head. No, it's stuff like this that I think about, and then I'm like, uh, can't say that now because I got to focus on this next thing I got to do. So, uh, Must think. That's right. I can't think and model at the same time. It's true. That's good to know. It's so curious. I clearly can't. It's so curious that your your chamfering technique. Is, I mean, it's super efficient, but it's, I just get so used to, as Aaron just pointed out, you get used to doing things a certain way, and I'm just used to using follow me for a chamfer. Mm -hmm. Like an inner chamfer like that is, that's a much, much smarter way to do it. Yeah. When it's a planar chamfer, that is, it only happens on one face like that. Uh, just doing that is, is definitely uh, a nice way to do it. Once you start getting out of plane where that chamfer follows around to, you know, off, off the different, different sides, then it becomes easier to use something like a uh, Fredo corner, or something like that. Yeah. Um, let's actually, um, just for kicks and giggles, do that real quick. Cause I don't think we'll get, I don't know how much we'll get to this, but let's take this piece, right? This, this component, and show it just in case anyone's not seen Fredo's version. And the other thing is I'm modeling it that's at real scale. If you're gonna go in and add a bunch of tiny chamfers to something like this, you wanna scale your 
uh, model up so much bigger. I'm going to make this 200%, yeah. something like that. Uh, just at its, you know, underlying core, SketchUp was, tip, you know, originally built as an architectural modeling tool. It works at a certain scale very well, and that scale is not tiny, tiny 0 0.0001 of a of millimeter. But let's see. If I take this and then use Fredo's corner over here and... Uh, let's not crash SketchUp. In fact, I should save. No. Yeah, <laughs> save. Save and then crash SketchUp. <laughs> I know. Um, this actually is probably as much as I want to go. With this as big as it is, my offset's 30 millimeters, but um, again, that's because we scaled it way up. I'm going to save. And... Uh, Let's here. just make that a little bigger just for to show it, but otherwise that looks pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny you just mentioned the size of SketchUp model. I did just this week, I think it was yesterday even, saw somebody who was asking about how their their model was off by point zero 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 one six zeros and a one of a millimeter and uh i did some i did some investigating to find out how thick a human hair is and uh that averages around point zero six so three zeros and a one is is pretty pretty small wow uh. And I was having a hard time finding a reason for an architectural model to be that accurate. Well, this uh, this doesn't want to work for us. It's probably too big. It might just be too much. <laughs> all right, if if this doesn't. So, are you doing all your circles just twenty four seg twenty four segments? Just standard. Let me make sure there's not interior stuff that's tripping us up. Um, no, I turned these up to 48 segments. Um, just so, so that it would have a little more detail uh, yeah. um, than the typical 24. All right, we're not going to belabor this at this. Um, <laughs> it's okay to jump ship. Yeah, uh, I will do a quick solid test. Nested shouldn't be the issue. We'll try one last time and then we'll jump ship. Let's turn this back down. See, so Transom right. just showed up, and whenever whenever we first said that this was going to be a transit, I immediately thought of him for some reason. Yeah, I did too. But I know it's not the same thing. <laughs> Anyhow, yes. Anyhow. The, the, the idea that you could go through and around those corners, it is possible, absolutely. Um, maybe do it one piece at a time rather than trying to grab a big mass like that. But I so, do like that straight up corner, though. Freight of corners worth playing with. It is pretty cool. Um, in this case, so we're going to move on into like creating these arms that, uh, or at least putting them in place. And rather than measuring them, I'm going to create kind of the void in the middle and then use that as sort of my placeholder. So I've got 65 mil between them. That's one of my, that's one of the things I'm best at creating is the voids. Like I've got a model, I've got two models open right now. All they are are voids. Oh man. Just know your lane, man. Just know your lane. <laughs> shut, shut up. Stop talking so much. Actually, let's find out. 
how uh... when you did those models Aaron I guess you were working off of drawings so that's why you weren't live measuring stuff oh I I was given advice that, that nobody but the, the only the best modelers would ever attempt to, to measure a model <laughs> live. Nice, nice bit of sucking up there. For, for his that, birthday, I imagine, right? That, uh, birthday ties in. that disqualifies me pretty fast. Oh, thanks. Here, my my wife insisted I have to wear this at least for a little while. There you go. <laughs> So, remind me to take this off in a minute. Nah. <laughs> Probably not going to do that. Probably not. All right, that's the void in the middle, because I'm aspiring to be a Jody-like modeler. This one was 14 mil. All right, and this is about 80. So let's make this a component. Is Dave still with us? I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this Hi Dave in honor of my friend who gives me a bunch of crap because I, I still like to use groups and components, not just components. I'm a barbarian. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, I do like to remind people that they can use components and groups however they like. And I know Dave is a 100% committed to components uh, all the time, which is fine, but uh, I do mix it up. <clears throat> I was thinking about I, I somebody asked this last time I'm sure it gets asked a fair amount where the you get asked uh, well hey why don't you just give the the one solution to when should you use groups and when you should you use components and and, and there's got to be rules for for each one right and uh, I don't know do we have anybody in here from Texas and from Memphis and from Brazil and can all of you agree on who makes the best barbecue in the world <laughs> all of you can agree on that right like there's one answer to that right Wow that is that's powerful well may, <laughs> I, I'm gonna use that 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 maybe have been worse than talking about politics but <laughs> anyway, I was like, religion and barbecue are the things you should stay away from on live stream that's right so texas appears to be winning the barbecue by virtue of that's the only specific place other than southern u.s how come southern u.s is not the same thing as south america yeah no. nobody i don't know <laughs> anybody here from oh, canada do with metric units <laughs> A few times Andy's I've gone up to Canada and I just lazily refer to America, you know, as the U.S. They'll, they'll, I always feel bad for that. They'll they'll point me out and be like, North America is all of us, you you dummy. Yeah. I, every time I see Americans, see a reference to Americans not being, Canadians not being Americans, I'm just like, that is that's so broken. I don't know. It well, frustrates me for its uh, inaccuracy. I think the problem we hit is is that term United States of America. We shorten it not to the United States, but we shorten it to America. And uh, yeah, but what they need to do is say the Canadian provinces of America, and then we'd all be good. Here we are, just provinces? solving is all, that all the they are? all the problems. Ooh, Titus did call out Mongolian barbecue as being the best. As uh, as a fan see. of meat in general. I do toward, sort of lean towards that. Okay, okay, okay. So 
do they actually have barbecue in Mongolia, or why is it called Mon- Mongolian barbecue? Well, I think this is a United States thing where we say barbecue is when you squirt syrup and sweet, honey spicy and sweet all this, yeah, all that that red stuff all over a piece of meat, and then say it's barbecue. Ignorant Americans. <laughs> I mean, ignorant United States of Americans. Nah, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. I do it. It doesn't. <laughs> So this part, I, I'm kind of throwing a little bit of the accuracy out, just making this armature. I don't know. What would you call this? I never know. This is the reason I, I Aaron and I, I know, I think we agree on this. Probably some of you out there do. I never name my components because I don't know what to name them. Maybe I'm just that ignorant. I yeah, don't know what to call this. It's, it's an Amish part. Obviously. Obviously. Well, so is that what it's called? It's an armisher? As uh, okay. as I initially sure. called it? Yeah. Oh. Sven gave you permission to take off your hat. Thank you. <laughs> I like to think that he just looks like a unicorn. It's not his birthday, it's just unicorn day. You and my You're kids, You're all unicorns, buddy. guys. <laughs> I'm one of your kids? What? No, you and my kids like to think oh. that. Kids are smart kids. Uh-huh. Where'd that come from? Mom. I don't know. Aaron, am I making any fatal mistakes yet? I'm sort of like... Probably, but I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> that's, it's good TV when you screw up and we get to watch it. Oh, people love your pain. <laughs> it's a cruel, cruel world. Okay. All right. That's tolerable. That sounds like a solid goal. So Titus has uploaded the name of all the parts to the forum. So Ooh, Aaron, there you go. Hard job, you hard job to go there and, and learn all of them really quickly so that every time Tyson says something, we can make fun of him and correct him. The point was that I, <laughs> I like being lazy and not knowing the names. So that I don't have to name my components. And now you're sort of yeah. subverting this, <laughs> this strategy. Right. Come on. You, you can't get out of it that easy, pal. Oh, these <laughs> names are, are pretty, they're pretty straightforward. Vertical motion, tangent, screw, upper tangent, screw. I mean, really just, they're all just tangent screws. Do you want me to translate that for you? That is the vertical part. The sidey part, <laughs> upright <Sturdy> part, <laughs> down low. Perfect. Yeah, plus, plus the the picture that Titus uploaded looks different from yours. So you know the name. Oh, is totally yeah, it's gonna be totally different. Thanks, Titus. I'm but... pretty sure, I'm pretty sure his is European, and so all of these are European terms. But. Tyson is modeling in millimeters, so that may be appropriate. Ooh. So that's where actually the fatal mistake is going to come in, is he will be have been modeling an American transit with European units, and it's going to just bork the whole thing at the end. Wow, good thing you didn't choose to use some names in there, because that would be, like, really just <laughs> disastrous all along, well, every way. <laughs> I will, I do want to point out how good Tyson was there because I know several of you had this loaded up and were ready to shout out 
why are you modeling that not in four pieces and components? And he did that. He absolutely set the four <laughs> pieces up in components and then modeled them. I would have modeled it all as one and then used rotate to flip a copy around and you would have called me out for it. But Tyson did it right. So are we still scaled up to a bajillion times scale or did you go back down to normal size? Oh yeah, no, that one didn't work. So I erased it and went back down. This is real size. We're so this is actually millimeters? Scale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is, I don't know, like 14 mil. Yep. So um, let's throw the scope in here. Andy on YouTube was just wondering what the name of this thing is. This is a transit. Oh, I thought, I didn't realize that was a real, I thought he, I thought he heard that part at the beginning. I saw that comment. I thought he was talking about the tool Tyson's using. Because Kai did ask about that thing underneath Tyson's right hand. Oh, like the, the guess, Wacom yeah, tablet? There's a lot of things being worked on. Yeah, the tablet. And then uh, SketchUp. Uh, yeah, and then Colin also, yeah, exactly. And then Colin also was curious if we could do something to properly identify the size of Tyson's hands because it looks like he's using the world's smallest keyboard. Well, it is pretty close. Yeah. It's a teeny hmm. keyboard. See? Thanks, Colin. I'm just so petite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the problem with a transit as a word is that it is a transit you it's a word used for all kinds of different things. That is true, and that's why every time I posted it, I also put a comment about how it was a survey tool or something along those lines. Um, okay, so I'm sitting here looking, trying to find a good resource to explain to people, like just a link I can share of what transits are. And then I saw that Bob Vila has a post for a transit level, which is what I always called it, but it's DeWalt apparently makes one. But this is just my tangent to say, I just read that Roku the company that makes a little device for your TV has bought the rights for this old house. And they're going to start having this old house available as a Roku channel for free soon. Nice. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, you know, I think Bob and Nora would be solid guys just to hang out with and have a beer. I think that's, I think that's a fair assumption. It's so interesting to see these modern versions. You really should have picked one of these modern versions of a transit to do, Tyson. It would have been much less work. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, at least the one I just found. It doesn't have the big, the big arky bit. I don't understand how. See, Tyson could or Jody could name these things for you. Oh yeah, yeah. My components are a real, uh, real mess. But at least they're entertaining. I think looking back at my larger models where I have gone through and tried to name things, I just have a hard time being consistent. Like, I start off with a naming convention, and about halfway through, I just totally change it all, and nothing, it doesn't work anymore. So, Tay pointed out you could have modeled the, the Roman version. I'm not quite sure what that looks like. But now I'm wondering, do you think, like, the Egyptians had some sort of version of a transit for doing when they were doing their big old i guess it didn't really matter really if things were level because everything was so heavy it became level soon enough it's called self self-leveling <laughs> building materials yeah yeah how are we going to get this 500 tons of stone to be level well, it will become the ground and it has to be level <laughs> we're actually <laughs> shifting what what level is that's right <laughs> so maybe if i if we just built everything out of gigantic uh wait what kind of stone is it not sandstone uh marble it's not marble what is it what did they make the, all those things out of pyramids are made of 
Yeah, the stones on them. Else, I don't know. But I yeah. imagine they're heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I read that, that they were... Slightly heavy. Big Mr. Slightly. Mill was pointing out that uh, they did good math out there. Yeah. Yeah, limestone. That was the word I was looking for. Thanks, Mr. Mill. So it was sandstone in the middle, and then they had a, a limestone like covering, and that's all been, that was all stolen by looters and and just bad bad people. It, so... it is very interesting to me to think that, and and I I acknowledge that I'm saying this as a person who has over and over admitted that he's not good at math but the fact that some of the stuff that was built was all done with no computers no level yeah i mean, just it, it's it's amazing to think that uh you know all this stuff could be done <laughs> like that I, I feel like you're being naive and, and ignoring the aliens that helped them do all this stuff oh uh, fair okay that's what we're gonna do now huh <laughs> where's steve where's steve when we need him Did, what, what's the um I, I feel like there's a backstory to the the math comment is there uh, uh is there more to this I, than i suck at Air, math that's well, Air just regularly tries to do math fails at it or just gets confused while he's doing it and so it's regularly called out well here's the thing at this point I'm not getting defensive. I'm sorry. I jumped on that really fast. <laughs> um, that's, no, the, the thing is, I, I have now oftentimes just started leaning into our amazing community to ask them to take care of the math thing for me. So uh, I'm getting even worse at it because if I'm modeling by myself, I just kind of skip it at this point because I'm like, oh, man, nice. Titus isn't here to cover this for me. So it just doesn't happen can i can i go back in time and and invoke the community to just help me in a lot of my my old math tests oh it would be nice and mail your new results to your teachers uh yeah. in retrospect could you use this this these results instead of my previous failing results thank you <laughs> yeah. uh floris over on facebook is asking about using your pad over there versus a mouse um and i will you, you just keep modeling I, I will cover this um there is no. not one preferred okay <laughs> <laughs> just, well, no just don't yeah. just <laughs> to go no, really basic, sketchup was created and designed with a three button mouse in mind as your primary tool to control your input um but that isn't to say it's the only way to do it. SketchUp actually works really well with a, uh, a tablet like that, or um, we even have a handful of people who like to use trackpads. So they are in the minority, but they, are, they do exist. And we like to make fun of them. So if you are one of those people, let us know so we know who to make fun of. I will suggest, you know, so something like this, uh, I need to now start aligning this piece with this cross piece and then get this. If you're going to use a trackpad, um, get really do this anyway, but get really good at inference locking. And so I can lock the direction and then still navigate and I'm still locked so that I can then go back to the move key and move it to this center edge which I'm toggling on and off with the keyboard shortcut, hidden edges, and same thing with this. So um, sometimes you can do that. If I grab, I do have a mouse right here. You, know, you can do that, still lock, and then navigate with the mouse and do this. Whoa, he does own a mouse. What? So, no. You see nothing? <laughs> Pay no attention to the man in front of the green curtain. Wait, you, that didn't work. Did you borrow that from your kid's computer just to show that uh, <laughs> you're capable of using it? <laughs> yes, now never ask me again. <laughs> I'll deny it. So Kai, Kai uses something that is a, a throwback. I remember, I don't know, 
I tried this for a while using a Nostromo, like the little kind of almost like a tin key pad that's got a thumb movement pad on it as well. A little D pad on it. A Nostromo. Uh, I could never quite get myself using those though. I don't remember that. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll bring one into the ne office next time we have an office. Silly talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Hueyon, I've actually heard very good reviews of Hueyon tablets. So I would be interested to hear how that works out for you. Okay. I have too. Um, what what's funny I, have you heard the same Aaron anytime I hear somebody who's like my Huey on I'm, I'm reviewing a Huey on and they'll, they'll eventually be like well it just it doesn't feel like it's as well built so I don't know if it'll last as long but I've never seen anybody who's like well three years later it turns out it didn't last mm -hmm. as long I, they seem to be really I, viable you know, the, options the thing about a, a tablet is it's I mean, I guess some people travel, well, not now. Back in the old world, people would travel with their hardware, but I, I just don't know many people who, you know, are spending a lot of time moving around with their, their tablets. So I don't know that it has to be <laughs> bulletproof. It's not like a, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that goes lots of places. But I don't really <laughs> worry about my computer hardware being sturdy, I guess, so... Yeah. Well, so you can think of any of the the Trimble things, though, right? I mean, Trimble made a, like a like an iPad, a Android tablet that was super bulky. I mean, you could you could toss that sucker around and it would it would take it all uh, in stride. Yeah, meant to be a job site kind of beast. Um. When you, uh, how often, Aaron, do you, you know, so I'm modeling right now, kind of the eyepiece, and then I'll come over here. Um, do you like using the scale, you know, method where you sort of do it manually versus uh, follow me? Do you have a preference or you just sort of go with whatever you're doing? Um, I would say it probably depends on the complexity. I do like doing the, the offset scale offset scale offset scale it's 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 a simple way to do it for sure um one of the big things there is keeping everything on axis like you're doing right now so uh for scale because as soon as you come off axis that scale turns into the box and then it's real hard to scale about the middle but uh yeah the way you're doing it that seems about the same way i would probably do it too Maybe. With this whole thing being as big as it is, maybe not. Maybe I would just uh, do the whole thing as uh, one big profile. I don't know. But that's the thing about SketchUp, right? It's, that's what we were talking about earlier. There's not, a, there's not one kind of barbecue for everyone. So <laughs> there's, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, which some people don't like that term, but I personally don't have any cats, so I'm okay with it. Um, anybody here? Jody, you, you have dogs. Aaron, you have dogs. None of us are... None of us are cat Wait, people. Wait, what's the question? Um, uh, have you skinned a cat recently? Oh, God, not since high school. Okay. Just kidding. I have not done that. <laughs> I did skin a coyote, though, when I was in high school. That kind of something. I was going to be a mountain man back oh, in did time. Did you really? Oh, I really did. I didn't kill a coyote. It was... But yeah, there's the process of soaking him in a bath in a tub with a bunch of lye for a while, and then pulling it out and just having to scrape and scrape the back of the the skin to get it uh, supple. I was going to make a coyote skin hat. Wow, I feel really nerdy for nerdy in a really weird way for. Having Nerdy done that first. like semi-offensive at the same time. It was, it was, <laughs> that, was, that was new for me. I had a black powder rifle at the same time, right? I was part of the Mountain Man. God, what was that? I don't remember what the group was called. I was the only person under 40 in it, which is weird as well. <laughs> but it was fun. Let me tell you. So this is 
this is going to be slightly political, and I'm going to veer too far away from that. But every time we I bail out, see bail stuff out. About, about the American, the Second Amendment right to bear arms no. was a, an amendment written at a time where everybody had to reload their gun after one shot. It feels like that's maybe things have changed and that bears a revision since now you can reload your gun really fast. Because let me tell you, using a gun where you have to pack down all of the gunpowder and then put a, a pad of cotton in there to keep it from just pouring back out and then packing a ball on top of that, it's not efficient at all. It's very non-threatening. No, but it is very loud if I remember my scout camp uh, experience. It is loud. There's, there's, there's lots um, of smoke. It's loud. It's uh, acrid. It's, uh, it's an experience. So nor normally, Tyson, just so you know, right about an hour in, we start talking about TV shows. <laughs> it's and about that time. I just point this out because uh, on, like, on, on cue, yeah, Titus was asking about Resident Alien. And uh, <laughs> I think everybody I've talked to has enjoyed it. So it, it's definitely a, and, and, you know, obviously here on this particular channel, we are all for sci-fi nerdery of any kind. And man, it fits the bill, but it's also very funny. And uh, anything with Alan Tudyk in it is just. I was going to say, and we're all fans of very much of Alan Tudyk, so. So I've decided my favorite line, though, is he was talking about when his wife came to, to, to like, showed up to visit, and he just, his thoughts were, she's warm, like ham. <laughs> <laughs> or there's a point where she's going to leave, and he's like, I have to find a way to get her to stay. I'm hungry. She needs to cook something for me. Which it's sounds nice sexist, thing. but I don't think it's sexist in, the, in the, the context of the show, for sure. Right. I, I personally... And this is probably just my personal humor thing, but every time he like is blatantly offensive and just downright mean and angry to a child, yeah, that just that just cracks me up. It's always fun to, to be mean to children, right? Well, when there's a good reason for it, if you're if you're just a normal human being being mean to children, it's not cool. But if you're an alien, then uh, I give you a pass and apparently enjoy it. Um, so there's like four episodes. I think there's still like four episodes left, and it feels like it feels like the current state of things should be the end of the season. So I don't understand how we're going to have four more episodes and then another season. Well, let me explain how TV works. You just milk that thing however you can <laughs> for as long as you possibly can, and then you end it a season after that. <laughs> Perfect. So this is a question that I get uh, seems to be fairly regularly is and this is something Tyson's doing kind of is why don't we spend more time texturing and putting colors and textures and materials on things and uh, I think you kind of did the same thing I do where there's there's an obvious transparent thing a windshield or something like that i'll put put a material on there but that's about it um and and i would be interested to hear your thoughts tyson because my thought is that painting things is just boring it's just it's kind of just the same thing over and over again and i just feel like modeling is really where the the good stuff is at what, what's your thought on there so that's a that's a fun question um, well, in, okay, so there's, there's the answer right now, which is I, maybe we will, because all of this is just brass and this black matte material, and that'll be easy to apply. And it's colors. I like applying colors. I don't know about you, Aaron. I, I like that. I don't like applying textures because let's just call spade a spade. SketchUp and textures, you have to create your own textures and implement them in a good way to make them look good. They can, mm -hmm. but you have to uh, take some care and some time or they're just gonna look to me um, 
you know, a little bit, kind of a little bit dated. So I don't put textures on unless I really intend to commit to it, I guess. Is yeah. That fair? Well, and, and I think that uh, Studio RT Cool just called this out. Um, it would be useful to talk about it, but I think what you're saying is true that that would be like the focus of a session would be like, okay, we're going to do a brief model maybe and then get into some custom textures. I like it, but I, I, I tend to find that when I do textures, it's a lot of place it, resize it, rotate it, grab the next one, bring it in, place it, resize it, rotate it. And there's a lot of that kind of grunt work, repetitive grunt work with each, each piece I do. So maybe that's why I steer clear of it or don't spend as much time on it is as some people maybe would like. I, I feel like the results I get once I start texturing in SketchUp, it ends up looking more more amateurish. Um, just because I I don't use I don't use any I don't necessarily use good textures, and to be fair, I probably also use some stuff that is I use things that are very deliberately contrasting just so that I can spot the differences when I'm actually trying to build off of that model. Well, I think it's part is I I really like the simple clean look of a white SketchUp model like this, where I just see surfaces and that, that light shadowing. Um, that's something I really, I personally like the aesthetic of that. Um, I think that looks clean and nice and as a designer and 3d modeler. That's kind of what I'm shooting for. So, um, but I get it. That's not, not where everybody's workflow ends. Um, so I've made several videos on, making materials, adding materials, that kind of thing. So we do do it. Uh, I just find that we don't we don't spend as much time on, on live models as uh, maybe some people would like. I think it'd be interesting to, I, I don't know if the if people want to throw comments out there. Um, I, I'm just sort of like trying to run this through the back of my head. And if you're going to talk about materials, you you need a little bit of a context because when I apply materials for woodworking, I have a methodology that I don't think would apply necessarily for interior and doing a lot of surfaces and making sure that where an interior, it's all about very accurate material representation. And that's different than if you're doing a massing model and that's different than, so I feel like material application can be very context sensitive. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have that? Kind of intuition or thought or experience or like that's that's kind of just my again my sort of concern about if we were to do it it would be very specific towards one workflow or industry well yeah and i think that's i mean we're back to the uh the reason SketchUp is what it is, right, is because there is so many ways to do any of these things. So some people do like using just colors to finish their models. Other people like using stock imagery. Other people do make purpose-built materials. Looking at you, Dave, who actually takes pictures of lumber and brings it in to throw it into his model. Um, but everybody didn't do that. I've heard some people don't. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> plus and i know and i have to apologize anybody who's who, who uh i'm not intending to call anybody out but we have had people go oh let's do some rendering in in one of these sessions and i just can't think of anything more boring than sitting and waiting watching the <laughs> render show up okay on the screen, so i don't i don't want to toot my own horn here but part of the waiting is then you get to banter with the talent <laughs> Wait, who's the talent in this, this scenario? You and Tyson. Ooh. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So is that is that such a selling point there? Yeah. Uh, if we could... uh. <laughs> so so Ashley said she puts just puts random colors on there, but then when she, she takes it into Chief Architect and replaces the materials there. Which I feel like that's that's probably what a lot of people do is they when it take when it goes to presentation, SketchUp is stage one, and then they go to something else, be it Photoshop or a CAD pa package or whatever. They go to something else, and then really do the heavy lifting or light lifting. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, Andy, Andy just caught that uh, Tyson resized the circle he had by grabbing uh, a cardinal, a hidden cardinal line, and pulled it out. If you grab the edges that are, uh, so if you create a circle, make it on axis, then you can actually grab the one of the four points on the, the four main sides and move them, and it will actually resize the geometry they're created as part of. Good catch. Um, so and, just to show that, well, so the cardinal, it, again, so if we watch the, you know, that's going to be a cardinal point that one is if we use the move tool see how we can hover over the surface and then there's this edge and that will resize and that's even true we can resize just the outside or the inside that's what we're talking about right yeah yeah the cardinal points are, are almost like a hidden it's probably time for another video on them we did one a while ago but it's probably been two years um they're kind of like a hidden feature it's the geometry that's in there um one of the big things about being able to use them is you do have to maintain your original geometry if the circle breaks for any reason you can't use it anymore if you go in and weld the edges it doesn't show up anymore so uh it does only work as long as you maintain it as a circle by itself yeah so i exploded this curve and no bueno the inside one yeah should still work but this outside so, one is no good so andy said oh never mind i'm reading two lines i read two lines ago and then one line ago he said that's it never mind i'll be quiet i gotta undo back to here <laughs> Sometimes the geometry, like I'm doing here, when you, you have geometry that's all connected to a bunch of different faces, so, I, you know, it will leave it. And in that case, I just like to use the uh, option to push-pull a copy of the face. And then I can still go back in and have that. Like it. Um, right. In case so is that like a little Roman? Looks like he's got a little Roman thingy it on does, his helmet huh? there. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, this is actually it was an unintentional segue. Uh, Dave posted a picture of what the Roman equivalent of this was, and it's literally a dude with like four sticks and what was that? No, one stick with like a little cross on the top, and then weights hanging around four of them. There's and those Romans, they had to figure stuff out. Nice. I'm, I'm saying that so Aaron can go look at it and then go, whoa. It's on my list of things to do. OK, thanks. Um, I was just going to point out, Kai just asked a question about our live model being an hour different. We did change our clocks last weekend. 10 days ago. Yeah. Um, for daylight savings. I know not everybody in the world does that. So um, Some people don't care about saving daylight, apparently. You guys that don't save daylight, what, do you, what you are you doing to them? You can't save daylight, Jody. You can only save memory. <laughs> um, Isn't it called memory savings time then, Aaron? <laughs> I save every memory of any time I spend with you guys. Nice. Well um, played. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, uh, if you do need to verify what time something's going to be your time, you can always head over to the forum, go to the happening section, and there is a pinned uh, topic there that is our schedule. And the nice thing is the, the times are put in there, so they should reflect your current time zone as far as what time will be live. Um, felt like we were really having a moment there, Jody. Oh. Yeah, and then Aaron, Aaron interrupted us. Yep, that's what I do. 
<laughs> What's your keyboard shortcut for uh, hiding rest of model and hiding similar Aaron? I don't know because I just have it mapped to a button on my 3D mouse. Uh, mm, so you need to, you need a 3D mouse to be able to do that? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Let me find What's out. What's a 3D mouse? Uh, and this shows how often I how I just don't really change shortcuts very much because I have to remember where to go to find those. <laughs> All right, how to rest the model is Shift Q. I'm trying to think what the logic behind that was. I think that was just a, a geographic decision because it was on the left side there. I guess that's the lead in to say, I don't know if anybody, um, like hide rest of model and hide similar components is, uh, is for me kind of super essential. Yeah. As far as I'm like, having an issue right now efficient. where if I start modeling with components, I also need to have a shortcut to uh, show or hide similar components because I'm struggling with that. I don't have that. You don't have the the similar component. No, not a, I don't have a shortcut for it, so I always have to go up into the menu to do that. Here, a quick plug. One option, if you don't have shortcuts for it, I'll give you uh, my plug for making it shift and then just use all your keys so if i take this guy and i need to align it over here i can hold shift lock it and now i can toggle on and off all of these useful pieces as we're going while being locked and you can just turn those on and off that's my rationale yeah, that's the, t the two shortcuts I have is hide rest of model and show and hide hidden geometry. Now what I need is show similar components and show hidden objects as additional ones. <laughs> oh, so many buttons. Whoa, okay, I just saw the guy with the stick on the forum. The stick? I will say this. That is about a 10 minute model at max. <laughs> you start having to bring, like, find 2D components to bring in to be the men standing around it. Man, I, I still don't understand how that thing, I don't understand how the real one works, so I'm just going to stop talking. Well, and if you're trying to do that in Egypt, it's all sand, so it's just going to keep falling over. And just, do you just, like, do you tell somebody, okay, Go run halfway up that pyramid and tell them that side needs to be a little higher. <laughs> like I, I, I get that they can look at it and figure out if it's level or not, but I'm just trying to figure out how that, how that is then uh, conveyed. <laughs> wow, that's we've come a long way, baby. Tyson, I have to say I'm truly impressed at how much you've managed to accomplish with this in an, an hour and twenty minutes. I heard that. That hurt, Jody, but I understand. That's cool. Um, no, no. So we, you don't usually pick anything that we would both, before <laughs> the start, we both agreed that this was uh, ambitious. Yeah. Well, maybe it wasn't, but this is what, this is what happened with Aaron models too, is I'm just like, you sure you're going to try and do that in a whole hour? And then he gets done in an hour and 20 minutes. Like the Orca, that went way too fast last week. Yeah, that was quick. That was, no, that's, that's, that was impressive. Let's give credit. Uh, there, there's some trickiness to that. Um, this, I, I think this model is fun. This one is, um, when you look at the individual pieces of it, there's nothing that's, there is one thing that I'm skipping. We were talking earlier about how these, these arms actually curve in and have this really, really um, interesting corner. And I'm skipping that altogether. But otherwise, the pieces... There's just a lot of them. It's not that any one piece of this 
is super complicated. It's just there's just a lot of a lot of detail in here. I don't know. It's fun. Well, I, I think that's an important part of it, though. The ability to take a real world thing and break it down into its pieces is kind of how you go about this. And you're doing a great job of that. That's just this is a great way to show that exactly. Let's do. All right, so Transom's re referencing a theodolite, and now I've got to go look up what a theodolite is. One, one second, so that I can either laugh. Let me know or... what that is. I've I've seen that term in reference to this, and I, I I'm curious what it what it is. So it's looks like a it's a precision optical instrument for measuring angles between designated visible points on the. So it looks like the same thing, but basically a bit more. Actually, a, a total station. It looks like a total station. <laughs> It's like a it's like a fancy lens between a couple of pivots. It looks just looks like a high tech version of a higher tech version of this though. That's funny. You look at the old ones though, and it looks like it should be mounted inside of a like a constellation viewing. It should be at a at a astronomer's whiz whiz gidget. Theodolite. Yeah, it sounds like a min mineral, right? Oh yeah, well, I just found a this rich vein of theodolite. <laughs> Interesting. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go see if I add Trimble what it throws up here. Spectra precision. There you go. Total station is a just fancy computerized theodolite. So fun to learn all these new words that I'll probably not use again because I don't make a living surveying. Dave wants to know if you caught uh, some reference. What reference? What are you talking about, Dave? In his birthday greeting. What? 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 It's there. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what what Dave was what Dave was referencing. I'm going to give him a chance to chime back in and say what he was referencing. Aaron got so quiet. I've got to talk really. I got to talk really loudly to, to make sure that we don't uh, miss him. Did Aaron uh, get get into his dive into his bag of chips? I was just <laughs> taking advantage of the fact that I can go do whatever I want because I'm not on camera right now. <laughs> I didn't need to. I just went outside and threw some rocks at some dogs, and then they came back in. <laughs> <laughs> I throw rocks at dogs, and they run away. That's weird. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't throw a rock at a dog. I know you're not the person here that is anti-pets. Nope. <clears throat> that would be mean. Uh, we learned a new word while you were that. away, Aaron. We, lear we learned the word theodolite, which David Dave referenced, but I didn't. I didn't get the joke back then because I didn't know the word theodolite. Now I know. You guys, it. You guys don't know what that means. <laughs> it's just a fancy word for Trimble Total Station. That's what we've determined. Mm. <laughs> I thought it was when you told uh, Theo to turn the lights on. Theo, do the <laughs> light. Exactly. Julie, do the thing. <laughs> nobody's going nobody's to get the reference, but Tyson. Somebody might get that. Anybody? Maybe not. Do the thing. All right. Well, I I thought we were in the segment where we get to talk about shows. Why go for it? Uh, you can. It, yeah, but that's a show that nobody ever watches. Uh, the Last Airbender or hmm. Cora. What was the rest? What's that whole thing called? Not Cora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a crossover that should happen. <laughs> I don't know, does anybody has anybody watched The Last Airbender? Not the movie, but the, the animated series. If nobody did, then we don't we won't bother going down this. But if you have, then we can talk about the fact that they're about to make a bajillion more because that's the way of it. Everybody's now jumping on 
old favorite TV shows and making as much possible content as possible. Possibly. That sounds nice. I might just do that. I'm just going to go look at old videos that we put out and just remake them. That sounds a lot easier oh. coming up with fresh content. Thank you, Aaron, for this segue into what I was telling Tyson about yesterday, which is Planet Money, NPR uh, podcast that they do. In February, they started this series called Planet Money Buys a Superhero. And in the first episode, they went and tried to actually buy a superhero from Marvel. Marvel was not interested. And then they went and they found one in public domain. That, and then in the third one, they finally actually made a comic. But so what I learned was there's all kinds of stuff in the public domain. We should be doing that for future podcast or for live streams is modeling stuff that's public domain. Do you think we're right? running out of stuff to model? Is that what, what, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was trying to tie back into what we're doing right now. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you know? I know you've run into this, Aaron. You, you like where you're, you're trying to model to a segment, and I'm just mm -hmm. off. And I'm like, ah, oh, bail yeah. out, bail out. I'm, I am bailing out. Forget this. Well, and that's the pro that that is probably my biggest problem is I I'm not good at just letting things go. So I will sit there and I will mess with that thing. Oh yeah. Sometimes you got to step away. And it's always much easier when you're on the outside. <laughs> All right. Let's see. This, <clears throat> this is where you get into kind of, it's easy to add this little bit of details. And, and so it's, it's kind of when you do it on all these little knobs, but Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a good thing they aren't knurled. <laughs> then you'd have to send it over to Dave and let him take care of it for you. Oh yeah, Dale, Dave's our our, uh, our knurler. That's right. We we learned that last year when we were doing all of our machine drawings, mm -hmm. mechanical he drawings. Got, he got it down. Wait, what are we making right now? Is that like a little stone hinge? I am going to very briefly try to make this. This kind of is what the, the thing looks like. And and that's plenty, right? This is, I, I know so many of us are guilty of this. You, you get in there. And you're like, oh, I gotta make this tiny little thing perfect. And then when you come back out, like, what was that for? Why did you bother? You know, you could say that about so many things. Though. I, oh, I feel sure. like the "why did you do that?" is one of the one of the laziest questions in the world. Even when it's my dad asking why I broke his transit, <laughs> did it for because it, it was there to be done. It was so much easier than not breaking it. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't well, understand I the with, question. With, with a lot of things like that, I think that there's, when you start talking about just design in general, there is, you know, this, uh, there's considerations in design, right? And aesthetics is one of them. I mean, doing something because it looked good on the final product is a reason. I mean, I tend to get really pragmatic whenever I'm making a thing, but when you're designing a thing, I mean, you can't complain about aesthetics until you're trying to actually build it. That's what I think. The only person that gets to complain about something looking good is the guy that's got to figure out how to make it look good. So I feel like Aaron- funny little feed on it. That's all this yeah, is. See, as you're doing that, I'm thinking you just need more models where you're literally have a whole whole mess of components and you're editing one and you just get to see the whole thing happening all across the whole screen. You mean like a video card or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all like that. Never do that. 
ever. If I, if, so there, yeah, there's like there's two like forbidden words for if ever, anyone ever wants to what would like share a model with me. There's like video card in SketchUp. What do you think? And I'll just be like, delete, hang up, disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one? I don't know. Is it Cobra? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, question. Is is that currently a component? Are you messing up your things down below? So or did you make here we go. Miss that? Here we go. Or did I just ruin the punchline? Uh, no, I, <clears throat> it's a good question. So if you look at this, I did this. This inner circle is a group. These knobs are components so yeah if I mess with one of these we're all but inside of this component this leg component I made this just a group so that I could mess with the interior geometry because I knew that this piece we can just duplicate for all of these details and just kind of scale it differently and and change that inner circle a little bit differently and um, so it is the inner piece is a group, the outer piece, the outer knobbies are components, and that group is, is inside that other component. Um, that's me. That's how I like it. I don't know. That makes sense? Yeah, that's good stuff. So, I don't know where we, how are we doing here. One thirty. You got. You're yeah. Doing great. This is, this You've is got another. Hard. You got. You're halfway there. Hour and a half to go. What else could you got to do? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, good. We have all the big pieces. Now we just get to decide which of the details we want to add. And that, you know, I don't think it's worth adding all of them, but. Knurling yeah. is a good way to waste a bunch of time. Um, threads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm if you not, can find a way to stitch. I'm not doing threads. Hey, uh, I just want to point out without no, with, without no prompting, without any prompting on my part, Tyson chose to hand stitch a portion of his uh, Japanese temple. That was not on me. There <laughs> is something to it. That. It's not just my thing. <laughs> who who was giving you a hard time for hand stitching oh no no it's just he always ends up hand stitching something oh i kind of like it yeah i know and nobody gives him a hard time it's just it's at this point it's just a part of part of the process it's kind of just something you give uh <laughs> why do you have a little clock on the end of that <clears throat> i have a little clock so that i have a point to rotate this about, that's the center of this whole assembly. Doo, doo, doo. And so I can make, you know, sound effects are required when you do this. Doo, 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 it's required. Why do you have a clock, Ms. Gates? Uh, you know, to know what time it is and also to be able to turn it more easily. My arm. I used to turn my arm. Oh. Uh, I'm bummed that I don't have a good close-up picture of your transit, and I don't have transit on my desk to try and look at things that you could add. Um, when uh, when uh, when I t was talking with this about. Uh, when I proposed this to Aaron and I sent him an image, it's kind of interesting because, yeah, these old transits, you know, I don't know how often you'd get a difference. You look for an antique. Um, this is the David White Company. And you look for these, and there's a lot of little subtle differences that, you know, whether they've got these little levers that... Um, it, it's a cool little device, actually. 
Hmm. These levers take and, so and lock it in uh, for level. Down here, this lever, you can unlock it, and this one gives you micro adjustment as far as turning it. Um, there's just all sorts of little, you know, manual. It's such a cool physical device. Nothing digital about it. I think it's so cool. It's one of those, one of those things that you buy in a, a thrift store because you're like, this looks neat. I don't even That's know how right. I ever use it. Which begs the question, where did you get that transit dice? <laughs> Um, he stole it from your dad, Jody. You didn't catch that part? I didn't steal it. He threw it out. It was broken. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really break it. I was just kidding. Oh, then where did I get it? I um, th I did. I, I got this. I came across this. A friend of mine... Um, this is kind of just, a, um, it, it was somebody's, they had passed away and their family was just like, you know, he's got this barn full of stuff. So a friend and I went in and we kind of gave him a lump sum of like, we'll just take everything out of there. And we took it out and sorted it. And there were an assortment of, of good tools and stuff, which is why we did it. But this was just one of the things in there. And uh, I have no use for it other than it sits on my desk and looks cool that's something yeah so i have a like a thing used for electricians for like monitoring i don't know some sort of electricity thing see it's just how much i use it but it's got nixie tubes in it and so i own this thing because someone was just like ah, i'm getting rid of this and i'm like nixie tubes are amazing I'm, i need to i need to own this thing and so now it takes up uh this this completely wasted space on my workbench in my shop and it's neat and sometimes i remember to turn it on but for the most part it's just a thing i literally have no use for what do you suppose that's like for, is that just a human thing where we get stuff we don't need and we we have to have it maybe or is that just me and you what are what do you have tubes? on your desk you don't need air there's so so nixie tubes are like it's like filaments inside of a tube for every number or whatever. So when you look at old school, if you look at a steampunk kind of like clock or something like that, it's literally a, like a two inch long by inch in diameter light bulb looking thing, but it's got a filament for each of the different numbers. And so it just cycles through those things. They're really cool. Mm -hmm. If you wow. had seen this, you would have, you would have wanted it as well. You might, it's probably cooler than a transit to have on your desk. See, Tyson right there is where you could have used rotate to take that little triangle and flip it from the top. Instead I'm of trying scale. to lobby as many people to using rotate rather than copy and scale oh. as possible. So you would rotate this piece instead of doing this? Yeah, so you just select it and then use that end line to select the one up at the top. Now hit rotate. Now lock it to the green ax or red axis. Oh, I see. Oh. Do... Yeah. Oh. Nice. Oops. I'm messing up your there you go. Yeah, see? All in one. Boom. I can't argue with that. That's a solid tip. Yeah. Okay, guys. Aaron's going to take over. I'm going to go with boom. I, like I said, I, I, like, I have been enjoying that, using Rotate for copying symmetric geometry so much. It's got to share. I am going to practice that again right here because right. now. No, but now, see, now you got a thing because <clears throat> you broke yeah. that line there. And if you switch it off of that one right there, there you go. In prints across. You, got, you, I, you know what you're doing. So, neat that's what I it like looks like that. whenever i model that kind of thing <laughs> i like that nah that's solid i i uh there you go i'm gonna use that nice. i uh learned something yeah I'm so, so how long do you scaling. think scaling i've never thought of doing it different go ahead Eric. mr jody well i was wondering how long it would take before we could actually have you guys doing head-to-head -head modeling 
sounds like a post-pandemic effort. I like to think that we are post-pandemic right now. Well, that kind of mindset's not getting us through this thing, Jody. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> uh, probably once we're back in the office and we could sit side by side in the studio and multiple cameras on the stream. Totally doable. The last time, I am for it. I just, the last time I went head to head modeling with somebody, I just got my butt kicked. Is that a face cam? <laughs> no, it was, it was, um, it was at a game studio and it was Mike Tadros before he worked at our office. This was a long time ago. And they were asking like, hey, how do you model? And they were asking kind of some stuff that's a little bit out of the box for the typical SketchUp wheelhouse. And so I was providing mostly inside the box kind of convoluted answers of like this, you know, if you have this path that curves and goes down and does this thing. And Mike just threw out a plugin and did it in like 10 seconds. And uh, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> and SketchUp hired him apparently. Yeah, apparently. Well, it makes you feel me better. You probably look like an idiot, too. So. Oh, that does make me feel Jody's better. Jody's bedside manner is next to no one. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I think I've just known Tyson for too long. So at this point, there's no, there's no chill. <laughs> <laughs> and Tyson knows to pretty much blow off whatever Jody says. So. Yeah. He can do better call. than that, is what I can say. My kids, my kids have referred to him as my work wife. Like, I don't really know what that's supposed to mean, but. <laughs> um, we have done a couple head-to-head -head modeling sessions in the past on live streams, and that's uh, it's it's something that's it's fun. It's fun to do. We've done it in the past along lines of the um, shootouts that we do at, at our live events at our base camp. We do uh, this thing called SketchUp Shootout, where it's basically Pictionary, where multiple people sit at computers and they're handed or usually whispered words to them. And then they go and there's a timer started and then you start modeling furiously. And then... Uh, whoever gets the audience to yell out their thing first wins. So we've done some stuff along those lines as far as live models, but it might be fun to do something that's a bigger model or maybe like some cohesive pieces that go, go together just to see the different methods of modeling. So I feel like there's a new phrase that just came out of that that is really fun to say. It's like a, a tongue twister, cohesive pieces. I like that. That's like I kind of, I, I, I didn't hear what you said after that because I just kept, I like hit mute and just kept going to heat some pieces. <laughs> it sounds like it's a, it's a warm up thing. It's that's how you get your mouth ready to speak. That's right. Learn to properly the human enunciate. Human opened a bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be the, the our band name uh, for when we're the cohesive pieces. We're the cohesive pieces. <laughs> nice. Cohesive adhesive pieces. Your Whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so Andy, Andy asks if you remember the uh, Wheel of Fortune thing with Josh, Darren. The Wheel of Pain? I do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you can't see it right now, but I actually have what we called the welding glasses, which were three pairs of uh, SketchUp sunglasses taped together. So when you put them on, you could see about 10% of your screen because it was so dark. Um, I'm not sure where the wheel went, to be honest. I think when we packed up our studio from the office, it ended up in a box. So so do you want to explain what the wheel was? Yeah, so we, we've done, uh, we had done some of this live head-to-head -head modeling, Josh and I had at the time. And uh, I don't know, it has something to do with, enjoying the pain of others really is what it came down to but we wanted a way to kind of make these live models be a little more 
uh, of a challenge. So rather than just, you know, leaning heavier into the entertainment rather than just the education part. And so we came up with a thing called the Wheel of Pain, which was a little wheel like what you'd see on Price is Right or Wheel of Fortune or something like that that had these different, uh, what would you call them? Difficulty makers? I don't know. Different options on there that made it harder to model. So there was stuff like you had to use your left hand, um, no shortcuts, no keyboard, um, mittens, I think was one of them. You had to model in <laughs> mittens. And then welding goggles, which, like I said, made it imp very difficult to even see your screen. So that was fun stuff. That was a good time. Yeah, challenges. That's the word. Thank you, Andy. Those challenges <laughs> make life difficult. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was definitely a fun way to mix it up. And we actually ended up using the physical wheel at another, uh, which was a a laser cut wheel with a bearing wedge in the middle. Um, but we ended up using that same thing for our Halloween head-to-head uh, -head modeling, where we got a bunch of the uh, ideas for models were placed on the wheel and then randomly spun. So that was kind of fun. Uh, Andy said his favorite was the wrong way round mouse. I think it'll be. I don't know. They were all they were all sufficiently challenging for sure. Yeah, it was it was definitely. It was definitely you know reveling in others' discomfort to. Uh, Enjoy yourself. That was fun. <laughs> Man versus stream. <laughs> I like that idea. Big Mr. Mill says. Yeah, but there, that's the kind of stuff we could, uh, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this stuff. Once we get back into our studio, we actually, so we're moving into a new building when all this this is over and uh we will actually have a dedicated studio once again and uh we would love for as, as often as possible to hear your ideas for what would make what would make a fun fun content for you guys to see i love how vague when all this is over is because it, it sort of sounds like it could be happening you know any day now but at the same time i don't i don't anticipate this happening before I'm actually going in for my uh, my first shot on Saturday. Interesting. Nice. So did you get did you get accelerated because of uh, are you like in an elevated risk group or anything? Or yeah, I I am technically asthmatic, so that bumped me up. Okay. I'm one 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 level before the masses. Nice. I think I well my name's on the list, but I don't know where I'm at. I have not been invited to come in, so. Uh, I do think that it'd be great if we could figure out a way to make foot pedal a UI device, input device for this. And then you guys can use that. You can only model using your feet. I mentioned yeah. it earlier. It's such a great idea. Foot pedals. You know, it's, I, I have seen, it's been a long time, but it was, it was a ways back where the modifier keys, shift, alt, control, sure. I remember seeing something where, where there was foot pedals for those. Um, I don't think it was a popular device. I don't think it was around for very long. It was before the Kickstarter days, uh, but somebody made it, and I, I thought, wow, that's interesting. You could also do, so what I'm now, what, what I have in my, in my mind's eye here is uh, kind of a one-man band kind of thing, and specifically it's, uh, Andy, wait, who was it that was in Mary Poppins as the one-man band? Anyway, he had like symbols on the insides of each of his knees, so he would clap his knees together. So that could be another one, is to, to right-click, you have to clap your knees together. This uh, this starts to sound like the arcade, the SketchUp arcade machine, which sounded novel <laughs> until you actually used it, and it drove you just bonkers. <laughs> it was only bonkers because it was so freaking loud. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for me anyway. <laughs> then we'd have to get another yeah, webcam down underneath the, the table, though. 
Yeah, that's a little. That's, and I would feel compelled to actually work that day, not in my slippers, which is my standard work <laughs> as of late. But I feel like you'd you'd want to do it barefoot. That way, you could also do stuff with your toes. How big are these pedals? <laughs> I I guess it could be as big as you want it to be. <laughs> I am gonna keep trying, Aaron, <clears throat> to use this rotate thing every chance I can. I think that's a cool tip. I like that. I think it's. I really think it's sped me up. Like uh, I have rotate is one of the. Uh, tools that I have mapped on my regular three button mouse. So flipping to rotate, ro you know, so select, I have a button for rotate. I can just flip to without ever touching the keyboard. I can do it all on my mouse. And it's really sped that, excuse me, <clears throat> sped that up for me. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Mill, big Mr. Mill's got a great idea. As you have, it's, it's paired modeling. And so you've got one person that is the mouse mouser and one person is the keyboard. <laughs> 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 I think that would be fun for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so have you done a tip, the tips and tricks or, a, or a whatever your, the other, your other things are called for, for that little rotate thing, Aaron? Is there a video that really digs into um, it? I don't know. You guys remember ever seeing anybody on here remember that? I know I've mentioned it before on Live Miles. I don't know if I've made a video for it or not. I don't remember seeing one either. All right. Well, then you uh, should make one. Can Titus, I, I, Titus, I just want to let you know, I have, I have made that model before. It's, it's a very interesting thing to model because you can only look at it from one location. And that's the nice thing about scenes. Dave said that Box shows that that trick all the time. Is that where you got it? Was it a Box original? Oh, possibly. I don't what know. I, I really feel like uh, a lot of times, as you know, if if you if you join in the community, there's a lot of stuff you see going around, and you kind of see it again and again. But uh, sometimes it's hard to keep tabs on who yeah, you Aaron, were inspired by. Andy said, "Quick and easy 2D mirroring." It's maybe oh, okay. either the name of, your, name of your video or an inboxes or somebody's. I don't know. Tyson, I really like the little, your knurling tile with all these knobs. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, that's why I went through the pain of doing it at least once because we're going to get some mileage out of it. <laughs> Do it as many times as possible. So what components are for? <laughs> That's right. Um, man, I feel like at this point, yeah, we're just sort of nibbling away at pieces, and I don't even know. You guys are doing this a good a, job, though. See, this is good because one of the things that I don't want to say people complain about our live streams. We get a lot of support from from everybody watching, and I so much appreciate it. But one of the things that several people have come back saying is, you know, what about details? Because I think a lot of times in the two hours, we get the, the big pieces done and don't always get to do the details. So it's, it's good that uh, you're at that point. So I can say next time somebody goes, what about the details? I'll go, oh, get, next time Tyson's on, he'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> you get same thing with... Um... What about a Frank Gehry building? Well, Tyson's going to do that. I like that too. <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, so, I mean, to be fair, Tyson's first effort in this uh, live streaming thing was a, a freaking Japanese building. I mean, how many times did you avoid anything that was, was those swoopy roofs, Aaron, before Tyson's like, oh, I'll just do that? Well, now I know how to do them, so I don't have to avoid it anymore. Nice. So maybe next week. Oh, sweet. You show me how to do it better. I I went away from that one. I don't know if anybody was was, was here. I uh, I kept running into problems with my workflow. Like, what is the deal? I was trying to use a plugin, and I found out later on how to make it work. 
just can't do it live. <laughs> oh, quiet spot. Uh, Transom said happy birthday, Tyson. Thank you. Are you planning on doing this again next year, do you think? For my this birthday? Model? No, his birthday. Just having a birthday. Oh, having another one next year? Yeah, I'm going to have the yeah, same one. That's why I'm still 20. Nice. Nice. Good to have a plan. <laughs> and you're still too young to drink, so that's going to help keep you uh, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Keeps me looking chipper. <laughs> I thought you were going to say looking good, and that was going to be funny. <laughs> Oh, uh, why did I why did I here's start messing funny. with this? Here's something funny for everybody playing along at home is uh so years ago Tyson used to have his hair I don't know, I would call it fairly close to mulleted out. But he it was not a mullet. So it, it was it was glorious. Okay, it, was, it, was it was glorious and he would get <laughs> I remember like once a year he would do a perm on it and he just had this these beautiful wavy locks. And I don't fault him for that, but I do like to make fun of him for that. The reason... And I don't know why. I'll... I think I make fun of him because I have no hair. <laughs> the reason, if anybody really wants to know more than the, they care about, that it actually sticks in Jody's mind is Jody's wife said, oh, that looks good on Tyson. And he's like, mm. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> That's right. So, uh -uh. so this is a... So you're doing a 24 segment circle right now? Yes. This one's 48. Alex was, oh, this is a 48. Okay. Alex was asking if you should have more. So maybe it's worth talking about your, your choices for circle segments for those playing along at home. Oh, sure. Why'd you do 48? Um, I did 48 because I'm used to working with 24 and with uh, kind of that division of of two and 12, so I just doubled it. But I did 48 to add two, because like you point out, Alex, I did want to add more detail. Could be that going even higher would be would be good on some of that, but I just stuck with 48. Um, do you have a reason you wouldn't do 96, which is also, it's that same, uh, those if, same divisions? If I was 3D printing this at this scale, I would, I'd go up to a 100, a hundred plus segments. Some people wouldn't because you're going to have small segments, but I, I, I prefer to have a lot of detail if I'm going to 3d print it for this case, even if we render this, it's going to look really good. Generally. I, I think, I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, I feel like that goes back to your, what you're saying before is what's the purpose of the model? I mean, what what are you really going to do with this? And that that's what kind of makes that call. Yeah. And I think that 40, 48 seems to be pretty functional for most things. I don't think a lot of people uh, need more than 48. I know some people get in there and they set it to like 120 and start using that. And that's just, that's just madness. <laughs> You're just asking for trouble. That's right. It's crazy, man. Crazy. So there was a time, so long, long time ago when I did support, there was a, there was a time where I was, I would make a very specific point of discouraging the, the folks who were trying to go up to a hundred plus segments on a, a circle, just because it's, for most stuff, it's just such, it's, it, it weighs your model down so much. Mm -hmm. I think we, we've gotten to where we rely on uh, video cards, like 3D accelerated video cards and, and improved OpenGL. So it's not as bad as it used to be, but nowadays nowadays it's good it used to be just it'd wreak havoc on your model and your machine well and something to keep in mind to use the trick that uh tyson was showing with the uh grabbing those cardinal points and resizing you do want to stick to something that's divisible by four so that those are where you can get to them yeah so dave dave actually just said 12 multiples of 12 for circles yeah, and that's, that works pretty good it does 12, 24. Actually, I guess I guess I just start doubling. So I, I, if I need something low poly, I'll put eight in there. 
but then usually it's from there 24, 48, 96. I don't really go past 96 personally. It's, I mean, for, if you look at that, like that's 48 right there on that PC's modeling. See, and, Tyson, and that right looks there, pretty good. Could you use rotate to flip that over also. I could have I thought about that, but in just that saying, case. I'm just, just saying, just saying. You don't have to. It's cool. You ignore my tip. Um, because this was 48 and because we typically would work with that, the one thing I think, Aaron, like you would agree, if this was an odd number circle and you rotated it, now you've got misalignment in your segments. Mm-hmm. And I do not want that, so. Well, unless your segments are divisible by 12 or whatever. No, but that's like your top center should be the same for both. No, yeah. Well, this is. That's where you definitely want to make sure you stay on axis when you pull your circle out, too. So always be on blue or red or green when you pull that original circle out. Yeah. Oh, I forgot I was going to ask. Oh, well. I remember in the last base camp, I was trying to teach a class. I, w I was teaching a class on component use and nested components. And that question came up of why don't you, why do you scale and mirror a component uh, when often if if what you're doing is just purely symmetrical on both sides you could rotate it and get away with it but I'm so used to mirroring it because there are cases where you want each quarter of your model to act independently and rotating it will mess that up I don't know force of habit is looking pretty pretty sweet so we're at uh two hours right now so this is where you can start thinking of uh not that i'm encouraging you to stop but this is where you could start thinking about what do you want your final product to be or, or at the very least don't think of something that's going to take you another hour to accomplish yeah <laughs> I think whoever commented it probably in this case, like I've got 48 going on in all of these things and it's, it's working perfectly in this case, this one. Yeah. We could have, we could have doubled it up another time and, and gotten away and put the big one, but oh, well, yeah. Oh, well. I just got to ask on those, those four copied components to create the arms up there. Can you just go in there and erase the edges? Or, or hide the edges so there's there's that seam's not there. Okay. It's bothering me personally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But first, I'm gonna do a quick. While I'm here. I think this something a little bit like this. I'm making it up now. So, Aaron, we're going to hide.
hide those edges. Let's make sure we've got no dividing edges. So I'm going to delete those surfaces and hide those. Hide those. Sure. Titus, Titus has requested you turn on shadows. That's what you can do now is you can start making it look fancy with uh, SketchUp specific rendering behaviors. Let's see if we can. Let's. Okay. Yeah, clean up your workspace. <laughs> You don't, I, I don't want, I don't believe you leave, uh, you, you clean everything up. You don't leave stuff hanging out all over the place. No, cause he's going to make a, yeah. I gotta make a thumbnail next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a slick looking model though. I will, I will say that, uh, that it just, it looks solid. It looks good. Thanks. Ooh, look at that. It's even functioning. Now you can use it to look at the moon, make sure the moon's level. All right, let's see. Let's see how lazy, uh, how quickly, lazily we can um, throw some colors on here. I got to be honest, as you said, laze, I was, I really thought we were going to try to make it. Uh oh. <laughs> capacity capacity all right so i was using that old one let's see here let's just use can get away with this when you only have two colors in your model <laughs> Definitely makes it easy. Uh-huh. Alright, this one is nice silver. This, all this stuff. It's a nice bronze. Feet extra dark. And here's where um in the coloring aspect, I don't know what color I used. And since I made these groups now I gotta go in and color each one of these. Well, sort of. Uh, I, yeah. I can still uh get away with doing this. This is another one of those things where, you know, like naming your components, I know why, I know it's best practice not to paint the outside of a group. If you listen to, again, our friend Mike Tadros, it'll be on his list of the 10 things that I hate about your model. This is one of them, I think. Yes, it is. Yep. And for good reason, you hand a model off like this and it's confusing, it's so confusing, but mm -hmm. I am just that lazy. Well, and, and I'm not going to defend this behavior by any means, but I will say that it's kind of like how many segments you're using your circle. What is this going to be used for? And that's going to depend. I mean, if this is as far as this is going, which I kind of think it is, um, it's probably acceptable. If this, yeah, if you were passing this to someone else and they were going to go further into rendering or something like that, then yeah, it would be kind of a rude way to uh, finalize your model by throwing colors on the outside of groups like that. Yeah. So while it's a bad practice, why then would that, uh, why would they have ever added that? Come on, get philosophical here. Um, 
it was well first of all probably it came cheap i mean it this goes way back to the early days that you can do this and you can uh, you can essentially take your model and if it's a chair and you want to um, this is going to be a bad example but you know, if you want to go in and say quickly do that all of a sudden you have a couple iterations without actually affecting there's there's ways to use it kind of interestingly but I think more often than not it, it does get get you into trouble um, so if you share models it's not a good practice if your model is only ever your own and you're the one that has to deal with uh, the, the sorting it out later uh, well then to you yeah I don't know I think yeah no that, that's fair the, the part the part that gets confusing is that you basically change the default nothing material to a different material so rather than be white it should so you can like do things like take a color out of the model purge a color from the model and it will change to a different color rather than going back to white that, that's the kind of stuff that if you don't know it's coming it can make it very hard to work with that model So Deep Cube's wondering what this looks like in Outliner. Do you think you modeled it in such a way that it, if you just open Outliner right now, it would already be nice and clear and easy to understand? Oh, well, I can tell no. you it'll all be called component one, component two, component three, component four. Oh, yeah. that's right, because you were naming them. <clears throat> <laughs> right. um, let's see. You, really, you need to need Outliner with Outliner in mind when you start. Yeah, look at those. Look at that. Look at that uh, messy group component two group component two, group leg leg uh, hi dave hey. um okay well then we'll go with ash's question instead which is what is the proper way to color if it's not doing it by component level it is hmm. the the way that's most understandable is that you need to color surfaces not not shells a, a component in a group is always a shell you need to go in and actually color surfaces. And um, that, that way you always know it's at the root level. You can always dig in and reliably find it at the root level. And that that's the other thing that's confusing. If you've never done this, then you, um, again, let's, uh, let's confuse things. If I go in and I'm gonna paint this outer shell, something different, And then I go in and I paint this here. And now when I come and make another copy and then paint the outer shell of this, just this scope part, it's only going to paint what was on the shell. Now, if you understand that, and again, if it's your model and you use it, I think that you can do some interesting things, but it gets confusing if you don't know that you can have paint applied to every different level of your nesting and then to the sh the actual uh, surface. And yeah, it's just one of those things that it's potentially really confusing if you were to go in and try and sort out what's going on between these three. Uh, right. Well, I think the, the, the big issue is there's not a, a, a tool by which to clearly see those things other than selecting your components or groups one at a time, looking in uh, entity info, and then going into it and selecting each surface individually and checking entity info. It's just a lot of work to come back and figure that out later. So it's a better idea to just color the surfaces and leave it at that. Yeah. So, so actually, I actually, actually had a follow-up question. She said, is that why if someone, if she adds someone else's model to her rendering program, the colors are not there? It's probably because they assigned them to a component level instead of a surface. Um, uh, that's going to depend on the rendering material or the renderer you're using, um, how it's pulling in that stuff. Um, it's possible. 
I like your th these custom colors. This this uh, dark blue color you have on there. That's that's a nice look. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of fun. Let's see if yeah, since we're kind of wrapping, let's see if we can create a, a cool sort of hero image of this. I've got um, I've been playing recently with sketch effects. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can just throw one of the default. Uh, Is that in the warehouse? You may be able to find it, but you'll have to go offsite. And it's honestly, it's a, it's like depending on the version, you get an eighty or a hundred and fifty dollar plugin, something like that. Um, oh, golly! But, but if you're looking for a way to make non-rendered, non-vanilla SketchUp imagery, it is it's pretty slick. So is it basically an alternative to using a, a rendering package? Yeah. It, okay. So yeah, if you're going to spend, you're going to spend a bunch of money on a rendering package, then you might instead use this. But it all happens inside a sketch. Wow, that's really slick. It is cool. Because it'll do things like it'll combine different visualization techniques into one. It will uh, give you some a lot more control over different visualization options. It's it's really neat. It's it's like I said, it's really made to it doesn't have a simple explanation like a renderer. Oh yeah, lets you take a SketchUp model and make it photo real. That's not what this does. Right. But if you want to look for like an ambient occlusion look or you want to look for a combined hand sketch and uh, textured view, like it it's just it is really slick. Does it do anything to your model such that if you do this and then share the model and the person you give it to doesn't have it, but they just basically, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to the model that might break it somewhere else. Right? No, it not might, maybe some styles. You, yeah, okay. you so it, it, it is, look, it is passing good, like, data. Um, um, I don't think you can <clears throat> view some of the view types unless you have the extension, but Tyson, you might know better. Well, no, so you, you, my you, question is, if Tyson did this and added some effects and then he gave the model to me and I have sketch effects installed, am I going to see it exactly as he sees it? I don't think so. Okay. If you use the default, maybe, but you, because you can change, because you can customize your SketchUp styles and that has an impact. Um, if I had some custom SketchUp styles that I was importing into this, you'd have to have those as well or custom wow. gradients or custom sort of wash background images. It's the best way. Yeah. Like Aaron says, it's hard to describe because it's not a renderer, but it is a compositor. It just takes all the stuff that you might export out, throw into Photoshop, put it into layers, composite it, and then end up with the final image. And it'll, it'll do that in one pass. But the same company sells a, a, a semi renderer, called ambient inclusion and if you have that that can be another pass too is so i that said i love it i think aaron you, you sounds like you do too but that said it's it is buggy i can't find any of the other presets here um and if i restarted sketchup i probably would i find the ui to be fairly buggy but that's sort of just once you just accept that, it's still really cool. Sebastian said he 100% recommends it for lazy people. <laughs> and we've established I'm lazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was here when you, when that was established. So he managed to map that out without it in, in, in any way being a, a slight on you. I don't name my components and I color components and those are, I, I'm lazy. And you use a Santa mug well into <laughs> the, the spring, so. So I won't. I, I won't. This question is not. I for keep Tyson Christmas in my heart all year round. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Aaron, did you ever see um, one crazy summer? It was an old Adam, yes. or, I don't John know, old Cusack. John Cusack movie. Yeah. What? So John there's. Cusack, right? Yeah. So the character has a Christmas tree. It's like on graduation day at high school. He pulls up to graduation and he's got a Christmas tree strapped to the top of his car because he's still he's so lazy. He still hasn't like he was told to take it and throw it away after Christmas and it's still up there. And that's Tyson. <laughs> yeah. 
just just know who you are and commit 100%. That's, that's the important part. That's totally fair. That's right. Uh, Andy's wondering if you if you just don't save or like why he didn't ever see you save. Um, well, first of all, autosave is happening, so I will have lost 10 minutes, but that's probably... Uh, uh, okay, so he wasn't being all snotty. I was being snotty. He just said you haven't saved him forever. No, that's, that's fair. It, it got run through the Jody filter there. Yeah, sorry. My bad. I kind of um, turned into a little family. You should you should make some smaller and bigger too, like little kid little kid transit. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, at this point, like, I, if it's not obvious, we're sort of just I'm kind of just trying to create a, a fun final image of uh, of a group of transits here. So we we can call it good. <laughs> Patty said, think, "You don't." I think this is a great spot. To, to... Good. Titus said what? Titus said you don't say because you're that late. Whoa. Well, Titus. you know what? Uh, nothing ruins an attempt to be lazy like having to remodel 40% of the Notre Dame Cathedral. So, well, <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my laziest when I spend twice as much time trying to figure out how to do it in half the time. Boom. Um, all right, we'll render this, this look, and call it. This looks real nice, Tyson. If you ever use right, Sketch well, Effects, it's going to revert to your last swing until you render. But thanks, Jody. Awesome. Let's see. Andy said, put them in a wagon, and then they can be transits in transit. Oh, I got it. Hold on. We need to turn shadows back on. Transits in transit, nice. Do it, do, did, and did if anyone... you're sending them to transom, transom, <laughs> transom, 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 transom. This will be in the 3D warehouse, JDC. Uh, and this video will be saved to YouTube, everybody. And you can take these and render them in the package of your choice. Yeah. There you go. Including SketchFX. Mind the colors on the group, though. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, hey, I, I, as uh, Tyson is generating a beautiful looking thumbnail for YouTube, um, I do want to call out a quick thank you to everybody for hanging out with us this Tuesday afternoon. Um, I just want to point out that March is something of a weird month in that we schedule four live models per month. So twice a year, we have an extra week. So next Wednesday, there actually won't be a live model happening. Um, but because of reasons, we will actually be coming in and doing some sort of a live model next Friday. So we're going to go back to a, a good old fashioned fun Friday model. So if you are about or out and about or capable or I don't know where that where that where it's going, but uh, if you're able, that's what I was trying for. If you are able to join us one week from this Friday, it, I will put it up on the forum. Uh, we will be doing a uh, fun, another fun live model. So don't come back next Wednesday because we won't be here. Or come back next Friday, but we won't be here. Do yeah, what, you do whatever you want. This Friday or next Wednesday. Those are the days you shouldn't come. Or do come, but don't expect us to be here. That's true. I'm not, you telling, I'm not telling you what to do. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tyson. That was that was that was a pleasure to watch. It's it's nice to just sit back and watch somebody else model every once in a while. That's great. That, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Get my lazy on. Mm hmm. Well, thanks everybody. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Jody. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and we will see you next time. See you in a fortnight. Cheers, y'all. Right. Wait.